Do your research to know who likes what and give each and everyone what he treasures most. So this will be effective to you. Because sometimes when we attend courses about management, people complain, you see, I always give, give gifts to my employees, but they don't improve, they're still busy. The reason is he doesn't do research on what each and everybody treasures. Because for him, he thinks because he likes plaques, everyone would like a plaque. Some people don't like plaques. Some people, they like cash. Some people like certificates. Everyone has what he likes. So if you are in position and you want to reward your employees, do a research on which, what everyone treasures the most and give everyone whatever he likes, then they will be motivated and they will be happy. But you don't give them the same thing across the board. Likewise, when we talk about equality, sometimes when you have two children, one of them works harder than the other. One of them is uh, affiliated to, loves you more than the other. One of them is more loyal to you than the other. So in your heart, you are inclined to that one more than the other person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not, does not help hold us responsible for our heartfelt inclinations. And I will explain that in a minute. He does not hold us responsible for our heartfelt inclinations. What we are responsible for is justice in material things. If you buy a car to uh, child B, you have to buy to your child, uh, your son C. But in your heart, if you feel that you are more inclined to Muhammad than Ibrahim, you are not questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Although you should try hard to love them equally. But love is something that we don't control and I will explain it in a minute. There was an Islamic studies scholar or teacher who was teaching youth about equality and justice in Islam. So while he was teaching them, they found out that he was concentrating on one boy. So his rapt attention was focused on one boy and he did not care about the others. He would come to him, make sure he understood and follow up with him more than he did with other students. So the students were angry. They, they had to ask him the same. You are the one teaching us to be equal with each other. Why are you not fair to us? We see that your attention is here towards one student and you are not giving us all the same attention. So he just wanted to do something to teach them a lesson, not verbally, practically. One of the, uh, is that one of the Western psychologists called uh, Stephen, Stephen Covey, he wrote a book about the eighth habit, seek to understand and to be understood. And in this book he says, you have to dramatize your ideas. So for example, if you encourage someone to do something, every time you talk, you are tired of talking, you have to dramatize them. How do you dramatize them? It's the same thing that this teacher did. He took all of them out of the classroom. He gave each and every one a bird and a knife. He told them, I want each one of you to slaughter the bird in his arm in a place where no one will see him. Make sure you go to a place where no one will see what you are doing. So all of them went and slaughtered the birds and came back and said, we have done the job, we've slaughtered the birds in a place where no one saw us. Except one, he didn't slaughter. And that's the child whom he used to concentrate on. So when he asked the boy, why didn't you slaughter? He said, sir, I didn't find anywhere where no one can see me because you usually teach us that Allah sees us in every place where we are. Wheresoever we may be, Allah will see us. So he told the other children that this is why I concentrate on him, because he is pious. <coughs> and this is not something new. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once he took some things from a Jew, from a Jew trader. He bought some things, he didn't have cash, and he had to pay after some time. On credit, he took the, uh, the commodities. So after some time, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam paid the cash, paid the Jew. He cleared the debt. But he was surprised while he was walking one day with one of his companions called Khuzayma, the Jew appeared and said, Prophet Muhammad, you owe me some money. Prophet Muhammad was surprised. Which money do I owe you? I have already paid you the commodities that I took from you. I paid. Then the Jew asked, do you have any witness? The Prophet didn't have a witness because the transaction was done between the Prophet and the Jew. No one else was there. Now Khuzayma, companion of Prophet Muhammad 
وسلم when he saw that prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in a fix he said I am a witness Khuzayma said told the Jew that he was a witness when the prophet paid back the money but the prophet was surprised that Khuzayma wasn't there how can he claim now that he was there when the prophet paid the money so prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept quiet when the Jew left the place the prophet asked Khuzayma what's wrong with you when I paid the money you were not there how you say that you are my witness, yet you were not there. Khuzayma said, Ya Rasulullah, usaddiquka fi khabar al-sama, fa kaifa ukadzimuka fi kada darahim. I believe you when you come to us and give us revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can, we don't see Allah, we don't see the revelation, we don't know how it comes to you. So if you cannot lie on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why can't I believe you in terms of a few dirhams? So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because of this, he said, Shahadati Khuzayma bi shahadati rajlain. In a case where two people are needed to give witness, Khuzayma's witness equaled witness of two people. Why? Because of the faith he had in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because of the belief and unflinching belief that he had of what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told. So we can't say that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not unfair because sometimes we get fairness, we get justice, we get rewarded for what we do. If we don't do like other people do, we don't expect to get the rewards, the same thing, they ask the same they get. Brothers and sisters, this title is very, uh, this topic is very long and time does not permit. I would like to end with one misconception that unfortunately is rampant amongst Muslims. Muslims, some Muslims say that because we cannot, the verse says, we cannot be just to our women, so we have to only marry one woman when they talk about polygamy. Actually, uh, polygamy is a misnomer. It's called polygyny. Polygyny is a custom when a man marries more than one wife. And polyandry is a custom whereby a woman is married by two men at the same time. And both of them ca come under polygamy. So polygamy, polygyny, men married more than one wife at the same time. Polyandry, women married more than one man at the same time. So when people talk about polygyny, a man having multiple wives, they say, the ayah says, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْلِلُوا فِي الْيَتَامَ فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَى وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَى فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْلِلُوا فَوَاحِدَى The verse says, if you are afraid that you will not treat the, the, uh, the, orphan, the, the orphan girls uh, fairly, then you should marry women of your choice, one, two, three, up to four. But if you fear that you, you will not be just and fair, to all the women you have, then you have to marry only one. This is in chapter 4, verse number 3. Then in the same chapter, chapter 4, verse number 129, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You will never ever be able to deal justly with your women. So if you have more than one wife, you can't be just to all of them. So some people say because this verse says we can't at all be just, so we must marry only one. This is a misconception. First, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had more than one wife. And once he came with material things and he distributed them among his wives, then he said, Allahumma hada qasani fi ma amrik. Oh Allah, this is my distribution in material things that I possess. Fala tu akhidni fi ma tamlik. Do not, do not condemn me, do not blame me for what you possess which I do not possess, which means the heartfelt inclination. The love is possessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have more than one wife, by nature, your heart will be inclined to one of them. So this does not mean you can't have. It. The justice that we are supposed to do is justice in material things. And scholars like uh, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud, Mujahid, Al-Hasan al-Basri, they say the second verse that says we cannot be able to do justice to our women, it means three things. You cannot be just with all your women in your love. Of course, you will love one more than the other. You cannot be just to them, to them in your carnal desires. Of course, if you have more than one, you will have more desires, uh, you will have carnal appetite to one more than the other. Plus, 
uh, conjugal rights. Actually, this is a, story, this is a, a large topic and I would like to go into details when we have children in this mosque. Just to simplify the matter, the problem with married couples, when you go to suit your would-be bride and she accepts you, during that period of time before you get married, you become innovative in doing things in order to strengthen your relationship with her. She does the same. But once you get each other, you get married, you get you take it for granted. I have her, I have him, and you don't innovate on ways to love one another. So problems start here. I was approached by a brother, although I kept telling him, I am not a counselor. I don't have anything I help, I will help you. He said, I need advice. I have problems with my wife, and because of that, I want to marry the second wife. I said, what are the problems? He said, I lost appetite for her. You know, before I used to think appetite is for food, I didn't know that appetite can be for other things. So he wanted to go into details. I told him it's haram in Islam to reveal the secrets of your spouse. So keep them secrets. So he alluded, he, yeah, he talked in euphemism. He said, you know, sometimes, uh, he gave me some hints. And I researched the topic. I found that really, really some spouses, they do things which they don't take care of, but these things would lead to losing appetite towards one another, Ex especially if it's a cross-cultural marriage, when you marry from different cultures. So someone does something from his own culture, it's accepted, but from another culture, it's not. So this will pile up, will accrue, until one of the spouses will lose appetite, and if he's a man, he would be, he would be afraid to commit adultery, and he would seek to marry the second wife and the first wife would be cursing him, complaining, yet she doesn't know maybe the problem came from her. I won't go through details. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ani wa hiyyakum bil ayat wa fikri al-Hakim aqoolu qawla hadu astaghfirullah al-Azim wa liwa lakum. Alhamdulillah illa bi hadana bi hadana وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. brothers and sisters in Islam, Omar bin Khattab رضي الله عنه was famous for his justice. During his time, he made sure that justice prevailed. And he would tell his companions that he fears when a camel stumbles in Iraq, he will be questioned about it. So just imagine he's afraid, a camel stumbling, getting problems, he will be questioned about it. What about Muslims? And because of his justice, he was able to sleep, to be at peace without any problem. There is a delegation that came from Pasha, they wanted to meet with him, and in their minds, they thought they would meet him in a posh palace uh, with uh, expensive items in it. And when they were led to him, they found him sleeping under a tree. They were surprised. What did they say? They said, Hakam fa'adad fa'nimd fa'amind. Which means, because you ruled your people with justice, you were able to have peace that made you able to sleep under a tree. Which means if we observe uh, fairness and justice, we will be successful, we will be happy, and we will, we will be at peace, and we won't have problems. So brothers and sisters in Islam, in your capacity, you have to observe justice, treat people fairly, you will gain in this world and in the hereafter.